The trend of higher interest rates and inflation has paved the way for dividend investors with a defensive approach to capitalize. On today's show, we'll examine ETF strategies for buffering your portfolio with dividend income. Plus, we'll examine why value stocks could be poised for a major breakout. Lance McGray at Advisors Asset Management joins us right after this. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Stephanie Stanton with ETF Guide. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are new to ETF Guide TV, be sure to hit the subscribe button. This will ensure that you never miss any of our original episodes like Spotlight, ETF Battles, and all of the other shows in our program lineup. So with interest rates still on the rise and inflation stuck at stubborn levels, some investors are hedging their portfolios with dividend income. Well, here to talk with us about that and more is Lance McGray, head of ETF products at Advisors Asset Management. Hi, Lance. It's great to have you with us. Hi, Stephanie. Always great to be with you. Okay, interest rates, they are still on the rise. Managing duration risk is something that more investors and financial advisors are definitely thinking about. Now, the AAM Low Duration Preferred and Income Securities ETF, and that ticker is PFLD, it takes a novel approach by seeking both yield, but without taking a lot of duration risk. Over the past year, the fund has actually outperformed many of its peers along with the broader S&P 500. So tell us a little bit more about PFLD. Yeah, so PFLD is a, a really interesting solution in the, in the current environment. Um, when we talk about preferred stocks, it's, it's often an asset class that's, you know, quite honestly, it's overlooked, right? Especially in this current environment, right, where um, you have short-term interest rates, you know, you have money market funds, you know, north of 5%. Um, you know, sourcing income is not very challenging these days um, when you look at that type of, of, of yield and products like that. Um, but what makes PFLD very interesting is because it gives an alternative um, solution to income seeking investors to sort of supplement that income um, elsewhere. And, and the SEC yield for PFLD um, is over 6%. Um, it does hold exchange listed preferred securities, so $25 exchange listed um, uh, preferred stocks. And what really separates PFLD from the 30 billion plus other uh, preferred ETFs out there is that it's the only one that focuses on low duration. Now, for those you know, listeners that are familiar with preferreds, right? These are hybrid securities. They're longer dated securities that which, you know, in some instances have uh, no maturity at all. And with that said, you carry substantial amount of duration risk or interest rate risk when you invest in preferreds. And what PFLD does is try to mitigate your exposure to interest rate risk by focusing on those preferreds that have an effective duration of five years or less. Um, and you know, the sort of the numbers speak for themselves. Um, PFLD's current effective duration is less than two years. When you think about the broader preferred index, that's well north of five. So there's a substantial du- duration reduction in PFLD, but at the same time, you're getting all the benefits of the preferred asset class. You're getting the high levels of income tax efficient income because again remember dividends paid um, on preferreds are generally qdi qualified dividend income so not only on a pre-tax basis but on a post-tax basis um, this income is is very very attractive but you also get the sector diversification and and the the diversification benefits that come with these hybrid securities so pfld is really an interesting tool for for those that are interested in high levels of of tax efficient income um, looking to um, you know sort of um, supplement the income that they may be getting in the elevated levels of say money market returns um, and doing it in a way that's you know quite honestly um, you know mitigated on the duration risk standpoint so it's a really unique solution again it is the first and only low duration preferred market out there um, US listed ETF that is yeah so you're talking about duration um, in terms of duration risk, you know, um, as you as you laid out, it definitely impacts stocks. This has led to a massive shift in market sentiment away from high P&E growth stocks into value. The AAM S&P 500 High Dividend Value ETF, and this ticker is SPDV, 
This has been the beneficiary of this major trend change. So give us an update on SPDV's strategy. Yeah, SPDV and the rest of our high dividend value lineup, right? We have three ETFs that focus on this very similar strategy, um, security selection, um, but one's in the U.S., U.S. domestic equities, one's international, ex-U.S., and the other's uh, emerging markets. But the SPDV, our S&P 500 focused solution, um, is, is really, to your to your to your point is really benefiting from the the current environment right so yeah if we think about 2022 it was really the scenario where we had rising inflation rising interest rates and we had a slowing economy um, but still rather resilient right in 2023 what we're experiencing is inflation has been sticky interest rates have been sticky and we're sort of almost walking into that recession um, so with that said right spdv and its underlying strategy really gears up very very well for what we think plays well in that type of scenario um, we are definitely favoring less sensitive um, sectors that are really focused on uh, interest rate so you mentioned duration so much less focused on technology we're focusing on income generation um, and again with SBDV's dividend yield which is double that over double that of the S&P 500 um, but we're also talking about portfolio diversification and we, when we talk about portfolio diversification that is a major talking of point for all of our high dividend value ETFs including SBDV um, because our, our weighting scheme and our sector um, allocations are really not driven by market cap which we see in a lot of broad-based and even active managers where for the liquidity sake they're weighting their portfolios or their individual securities on a, on a market cap basis to provide as much liquidity as possible. What SBDV does is it selects five securities from each of the gig sectors and equally weights them. And that's really important in this environment um, because number one, it gives you diversification away from the broad-based indices. Um, but it also gives you this sector diversification. You will not be taking unintentional sector bets in our high dividend value lineup, including SBDV. And um, you know that's, that's clearly one of the major benefits of SBDV. The other thing I'll note is the, the focus on dividends. Not only the focus on dividends and high yielding dividends, but the dividend sustainability and growth of the securities in SPDV. You know, if we look at the past 10 years, um, the dividend contribution to long term to, to capital uh, appreciation in the major indices has been about 38 to 39 percent. Historically, that number has been closer to 60 percent. And over time, we expect that gap to close, especially in this market environment. So my point is that we believe here at Advisors Asset Management and, and the views of our CIO team that going forward, dividends are going to play a major role in capital appreciation going forward in U.S. equities. Yeah, I mean, that does make sense. Um, you guys have a new addition to your ETF lineup, the AAM Transformers ETF, ticker symbol TRFM, Transformers, I love it. Um, I don't know if you're a fan of the, of the movie, but um, what is this fund strategy and what type of companies might we see in it? Yes, uh, Transformers is our first growth-oriented ETF here at Advisors Asset Management. Um, it, it was launched back in, uh, I believe, July of 2022, and it is a rules-based passive solution and tracks the underlying performance of the Pence Transformers Index. Um, so what this solution does and the underlying strategy really um, does is it targets companies whose products and services um, show compelling potential to transform consumer behavior, technological innovation, and global economy. So when I think of transformers, um, you know, and I, I think about the movie, but three things that, that come to mind off the top is disruptive, evolving, and growing. When I think about disruptive, transformers is looking for proven um, companies that, that, that has the ability to develop and uh, transformative technologies, not only now, but in the future. In terms of evolving, um, we're looking for companies that are willing and able to invest in R&D, as we see it as a vital factor for companies to adopt and innovate in the future. And then finally, growing. Um, an interesting thing about this transformer strategy is that we look for companies where the underlying index uh, screens for companies 
um, that can sustain stronger sales and CapEx growth going forward. So a really interesting solution, one that's our first niche uh, growth-oriented ETF. In terms of companies in here, right now there's about 180 companies in the Transformers ETF, and a lot of the names that you are familiar with, Microsoft, Salesforce, Amazon, uh, Boeing, Apple, Alphabet, you know, a lot of the companies that you would, uh, I think you would agree, are transforming the world around us. And there you go, Transformers. It makes sense. Uh, Lance, before we let you go, um, you were talking about dividends a minute ago. You know, most investors, they don't typically associate dividend payments with smaller companies. And yet that is the unique approach with the AAM Ball and Gainer Small Mid Cap Income Growth ETF. That ticker is SMIG or SMIG. Um, so tell us a little bit more about SMIG, how it works, and where you see this type of ETF fitting into an overall portfolio. SMIG is um, actually uh, attracting a, a, quite, a, quite a bit of uh, success recently. It's a relatively new solution. It's been out about a year and a half. Um, and, and what SMIG is, is really trying to capitalize here is, you know, the blending of a very, um, you know, a, a very well recognized, a very successful active manager with the benefits of the ETF wrapper. And, and uh, it's worth pointing out, you know, front and center is that SMIG is a fully transparent active ETF. And what that means is you get all the benefits of the ETF wrapper, you get the low cost, you get the transparency, you get the tax efficiency, you get the flexibility in terms of trading, but you also get the benefits of, as I mentioned, the portfolio managers at Ball and Gainer. You know, this is a, a, an, an, an asset manager that has focused only on dividends um, for their entire uh, career. And what SMIG is really doing here is, you know, I mean, first and foremost, um, it is a fundamental active strategy, right? And it looks to provide a strong current and growing income combined with attractive risk-adjusted returns over full market cycles. And, and really, when you think about SMIG, there's three things that we talk about, right? Number one, it's looking to achieve high, high current and growing income. So it's not looking for a 5, 6, 7% dividend yield, but it's looking for a high current income, that above its benchmark. But more importantly, the growing of that income, the compounding of that income. Um, number two, uh, SMIG looks to provide downside protection, right? And, and we've seen that in the recent volatile times. Um, number three, SMIG is also, you know, seeks to outperform over full market cycles. And again, I'm happy to report, despite that the product has only been in the marketplace for, you know, about a year and a half, um, it has outperformed its broad-based benchmark um, just last year by over 700 basis points. So uh, again, this is a, a great solution where it is blending um, you know, a very uh, renowned active manager with the benefits of the ETF wrapper and, and one that we're really, really excited about um, heading into 2023. Not only because of the marketplace we're in and the importance of dividend and dividend sustainability, um, but also because this is, an active, this is an active solution that really does reap the rewards of an active manager and the efficiency of the ETF wrapper. Impressive stuff. Lance McGray, thank you so much for joining us. It is great to have you with us. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Appreciate it. And to learn more about dividend income investing and ETF lineup at Advisors Asset Management, visit aamlive.com. The link is posted in the description section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to ETF Guide TV. Tell us how you've been enjoying all of our timely programs like this one, along with ETF Battles and the many others. You can also find us on Twitter at ETF Guide. I'm Stephanie Stanton. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.